Learning can be from words or from activity. And so the point being that you need to learn, your brain needs to learn that you know normal activity is okay, that, that gentle activity is okay. And I'd like to just do a little exercise with you right now. If you're comfortable standing, go ahead and stand, otherwise you can stay sitting. And now, what I want you to do is move your arms out as you breathe in and back as you breathe out. So, in, out, in, out. Now, pay attention as you do this to the feelings in your body. Like, see if you're tense in your shoulders right now. If you are, relax them. See if there's any other areas of tension. If there are, relax them. Notice how this feels from the inside. Okay. All right. Good. So, there you have an introduction to Qigong. <laughs> this is and we'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. Now, you can start activity super, super gentle. The <laughs> most gentle you can start activity comes from graded motor imagery. And there's on, on your sheets, you'll find a, a web resource where you can get the graded motor imagery handbook. Imagine the motion you'd like to do. For example, say you're in such bad chronic pain that you're laying in bed and you want a glass of water from the kitchen, but you just don't have confidence of getting there. You just feel like it's just going to hurt so much to get out of bed or all that kind of stuff. What he teaches is to go through all the steps. For instance, imagine you're going to sit up in the bed. Imagine you're going to rotate your legs over to the side. Imagine you're going to transfer your weight to that. Imagine you're going to put one foot in front of the other. Imagine you're going to support yourself on this door. You're going to walk to the kitchen. Imagine you're going to get the glass out of the cupboard. Just go through the whole thing in your mind over and over again until you're ready to do it. Watching others move can be helpful. Athletes do this. Using a mirror box. This is a really interesting one. For people who have for instance, severe damage to their left hand and chronic pain in their left hand for many years, what, what, what's worked strangely is to take a mirror box where the person puts their left hand in the box and looks at the image of their right hand and their right hand. And so they move their right hand and it looks to their brain like their left hand is moving pain free. <laughs> and the brain gets tricked. It says, okay, I can move my left hand pain free. It's, it's, for some people, it's a miracle. Also for phantom limb pain, a, a situation where someone's missing one leg and they look at the other one in the mirror box and they do the leg and it can be a miracle cure for phantom limb pain. And it's just a real teacher for you that, you know, this pain, the problem is in your brain. Your brain has to cure the problem. In this case, your brain cures the problem with su suitable input, you know. Activity, Qigong or Tai Chi. Now, I, um, I'm kind of interested in, you know, yoga and that kind of stuff, and I went to a retreat, you know, uh, something, and Open Your Heart in Paradise with Ram Dass, and they had a Qigong teacher, and, and I got into it, and it really helped me recover from chronic pain. But I didn't really tell people about it that much because I figured, oh, this is just me, you know, new age, that kind of thing. But I started looking at the literature recently. There is the best clinical evidence for Qigong and Tai Chi of anything I was able to find for recovery from chronic pain. 18 clinical studies, a wonderful meta-analysis. There's compelling scientific evidence for the effectiveness of Qigong and Tai Chi for many types of chronic pain, including osteoarthritis, lower back pain, osteoporosis, and fibromyalgia. Now, you can start this really gently while seated in a chair. That exercise that I had you do, that's one of six exercises by Master. Master Wang, which you can find um, on the internet. You can also buy this uh, as a DVD from, from Amazon. Um, and, and so I strongly support chi, uh, Qigong and Tai Chi. Now, this is all facts, but 
if you want my opinion, my opinion is the reason it works so well is that as you go through like a Qigong move, like a, the, a slightly more advanced one like this, as I go through a Qigong move like that, I can kind of feel, you know, I had chronic shoulder pain. I can kind of feel from time to time during that movement, like right, right there, I feel a little twinge in the one shoulder, a little tightness in that shoulder, stuff like this. You know, you, there's little sensations that accompany that movement. But I've learned they're not traumatic. They're not problems. They're not going to hurt me. I'm not going to be disabled at the end of the Qigong session. It's just the normal sensations of movement. And so if your brain can get comfortable with the normal sensations of movement and not traumatize about it and say, <gasps> yeah, that's good. Um, gradually resume all normal activities. Motion is lotion, especially like with arthritis. I also have osteoarthritis. I mean, you know, your joints hurt sometimes, you don't really want to move that much, but if you stop moving, it gets worse. Motion is lotion, literally in this case, because it increases the amount of synovial fluid. Um, you need to keep moving. Motion is lotion. Um, if you do get a little sore during normal activities, repeat every time you become aware of the soreness, sore but safe, sore but safe, or the phrase of your choice <laughs> that with this idea, because I'll give you an example when this was useful for me. I went back to doing some gardening, you know, because I'm feeling good now. I don't have shoulder problems. I went back to doing some gardening, and I overdid it a little bit. My back was a little sore, okay? So I could have catastrophized and said, oh, no, this is how my five years of chronic pain started with a gardening overuse <coughs> injury. Is this going to be the start of another five years of chronic pain? Oh, what have I done? You know, how could I have been so stupid? Why didn't I moderate myself, you know? All that kind of stuff could have made it what, much worse. But instead, following Dr. Mosley's advice, I just kept repeating to myself, sore but safe, sore but safe. Because I really believed that. I really believed I hadn't done anything you know, hugely <laughs> excessive. And I was just a little sore. Sore but safe, sore but safe, sore but safe. 